Hello, it is still November the 27th, 2024. Now it is about 9.30 in the morning. Uh, the fog has lifted, the sun is coming out. It looks like it might be a nice day down here in Tampa, Florida on a Wednesday. Again, we are going to be doing a Twitter Spaces thing this evening, about 5 on my Twitter feed. Let's see if we can break that world record of 8 people attending um, and see if we can uh, get 9 perhaps tonight. Uh, I know that will make Aunt BB and uh, Doodle Bob happy. Um, got a bunch to talk about. We'll talk about these two videos I'm making today and whatever else comes up. Uh, you guys can attend. You can participate. You can leave comments, I think. Maybe not comments, but you can uh, request to talk and, and, and ask a question or say hi or whatever you want to do. We were going to do it Thursday. But I guess people are wrapped up into this whole Thanksgiving thing, so instead we're doing it today. Uh, which also reminds me that I want to say, um, if you can, if you're a member, if you're signed up for YouTube, uh, what I want to do from now on is see if we can't get to do this on a live thing on YouTube where there's a comment section. People can communicate with each other and talk to each other and leave comments and leave questions. Um, uh, and we can do it live that way. I would rather do it. Someone helped me. Uh, James helped me up in New York. Uh, helped me set up a Twitch account. Um, really for gaming, but also for my political stuff. And I'd thought about it, and I'd gone to it and looked at it. The problem with Twitch right now is uh, they've been pressured to uh, crack down on supporters of Palestinian rights um, and who knows what's going to be next believe it or not even though I've had two channels removed by previous regimes in uh, YouTube um, right now YouTube is I think more of a they're a bit more open in terms of freedom of speech uh, than they were uh, and then, 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 twi then Twitch is right now. So I think we're better served if we want to talk about stuff like this uh, on YouTube. Uh, I will not be monetizing it um, because obviously my subject matter um, isn't conducive to selling fucking Wheaties or shoes or whatever the fuck. Corporate sponsors don't want to sponsor websites like mine or channels like mine. And that's fine. I, they have no intention of, of, of monetizing it ever. My first YouTube channel had 3,400 subscribers when YouTube erased it, and I had not monetized it, and they will not monetize it. I don't put ads on these. I don't put ads on my BitChute channel. Even though BitChute does, I see no, I don't see a nickel from that. But because BitChute allows me a chance to place these videos without charging me to do so, um, I, I, there's nothing I can do about it anyway, so there you have it. Um, so right now I'm at 944 subs. I think I need a thousand in order to start going live. It would be nice if we could get to a thousand, hit that threshold, and then I'll be able to start going live. But again, that's got nothing to do with money. It won't fucking generate a nickel for me, but what it will do is allow me to have these things and maybe even do like a news thing every evening, um, until they drag me away, put a black bag on my head and drag me away at 3 o'clock in the morning and drop me off of a helicopter out of the top of the Gulf someplace, which, under Trump, uh, you never fucking know. He's Mr. Pinochet, so there we have it. Uh, we'll see. Um, but that's the two things. Also, on BB is still doing, I think, her meetups in and around the Abbotsford area in Vancouver, on Sunday, uh, tune in to this evening on Twitter or go to Aunt Baby's Twitter thing and find out what's going on with that. Uh, she did one this past Sunday, and she's going to continue doing them. Uh, she likes doing these things in person uh, as opposed to YouTube channels or stuff like that. But she also will be on the Twitter spaces discussion tonight. <coughs> so she'll be mentioning it there as well. Uh, this video, uh, the ceasefire, that went into effect local time 4 a.m. this morning uh, between Lebanon 
and Israel. Um, I have mixed feelings about it. Hezbollah had promised they were not going to uh, stop doing what they were doing uh, until Israel stopped bombing fucking Gaza. Well, the problem is uh, we just keep pouring fucking weapons into the fucking rabid Zionists fucking hands and they keep fucking killing civilians in Lebanon. Um, and so the Lebanese government which is not Hezbollah, but the Lebanese government, <coughs> has come to the point where they said, enough is enough. And basically, what they've done is they've gone back to the 2006 deal. <coughs> if you don't know, that was the first uh, birth pangs of a new Middle East, as uh, coined by Condi Rice back in the day, the new Middle East, which is exactly what uh, the Israelis are trying to do now with the Greater Israel Project. And the deal was such. There's a river uh, that's a bit north of the Blue Line, which is the legal definition of Lebanon and Israel, about the border between Lebanon and Israel. So there's a river up there. So between the river and the Blue Line, Hezbollah is not allowed to set up camps, to set up uh, infrastructure, military bases, so forth and so on. Um, they are going to, they have to stay north of that river. Um, in exchange, Israel has to, within the 60 days that the ceasefire is in effect, they have to move the fuck out of that space uh, and get back into fucking Israel. Um, What's going to happen then is the military of Lebanon, which is not Hezbollah, but the military of Lebanon will move 5,000 troops in. Uh, there will be some assistance from other nations, uh, like the Blue Helmets kind of thing from the UN, peacekeepers in other words, who will come in and they will maintain the peace and make sure that Hezbollah is north of the river and the IDF is south of the Blue Line. Um, and then, of course, Lebanese civilians who were forced to evacuate can go back and see what kind of destruction and damage that Israel has done. Uh, of note, uh, not only are the IDF soldiers supposed to leave that area, that space, but so too are Israeli citizens. That's right, boys and girls, the rabid fucking... Jewish supremacist, messianic settlers uh, rushed up there thinking they could steal some land, get some piece of land, because that's what it's all about for them. It's just to grab somebody else's fucking property. Steal, in other words, because God willed it to be such. Um, um, I have mixed feelings about it. Lebanese civilians who have been forced to leave their land are allowed to go back and see what's left of their homes, what the Israelis haven't fucking ransacked and ripped off and stolen or burned or made TikTok videos of themselves wearing someone's dresses and dancing around. This is a thing. Don't know why Israeli soldiers are prone to fucking putting on women's dresses and dancing around on TikTok, but... The most moral army in the world. <clears throat> um, so they're happy. Uh, civilians around Beirut are happy that the Israelis will not be dropping fucking bombs on them and killing them in their sleep. Blowing up fucking eight-story apartment buildings, um, which has been happening. Um, destroying fucking targeting hospitals and, and civilian infrastructure, which has been happening. So the Lebanese civilians are happy. Hezbollah has yet really to um, comment, though they are reportedly doing it, abiding by it, but they have yet to comment on it. 
according to sources from Iran, uh, the Iranians say that the Hezbollah uh, leadership is okay with this. Um, but the reason being that because Hezbollah has promised, and of course it was a Hezbollah leader who was killed, um, Hezbollah has promised that they won't stop this until Israel stops attacking and gets the fuck out of Gaza. That's not part of this deal. Which is why I, myself, have mixed feelings about it. Let me go to two articles I posted on my website, read a bit of those for you, and we'll just see how this goes. This is from Daily Saba. Hamas is ready for Gaza truce as Israel-Lebanon ceasefire holds. Palestinian resistance group Hamas is ready to reach a ceasefire in Gaza, a senior official said Wednesday hailing the ceasefire deal that took hold in Lebanon. We have informed mediators in Egypt, Qatar, and Turkey that Hamas is ready for a ceasefire deal agreement and a serious deal to exchange prisoners, the official told the the AFP, however, uh, accusing Israel of obstructing an agreement. In a statement, at least later Wednesday, Hamas said the enemy's acceptance of the agreement with Lebanon without achieving its preconditions marks a significant milestone in shattering Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's illusions of reshaping the Middle East through force. That's the Greater Israel Plan, otherwise known as uh, the birth pangs of a new Middle East. Um, the group also praised the pivotal role of its ally Hezbollah in Lebanon. In the occupied West Bank, the Palestinian Authority expressed hope that the ceasefire would bring stability to the region, especially war-torn Gaza. Quote, we hope that this step will contribute to stopping the violence and instability that the region is suffering from, the Palestinian presidency said in a statement highlighting the need to force to enforce a UN resolution for ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. Let me, let me just say after reading that. Um, I wanted that to be the second one I read, so I read the wrong one first, so we'll get to that. That's this this trepidation here because Netanyahu has already made a public statement saying if, if, if they fart the wrong direction, we're going to bomb anyway. And that's what they do. Netanyahu has been accused of being the serial killer of peace deals, and that's what he is, and that's what he always has been, and he will do it again this time. Um, they if they if they if they can't if they get if people get tired and start noticing that they 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 stomp on and and they start attacking whenever there's a peace deal what they'll do is when when there's a leader on the other side who's got a peace deal in mind and he's been talking to people about it they kill him that's Israel because they're thug state just like we are see the previous video. Um, My my problem is with it is this. Hamas, even though they're being polite about Hezbollah, understands that this is, we are going to be, 60 days from now, by the way, uh, Donald Trump will be president. I'm just saying. 60 days from now, Donald Trump will be president. And Donald Trump has already promised that he thinks all of fucking Palestine belongs to Israel. He thinks Golan Heights belongs to Israel. He thinks Lebanon belongs to Israel. Uh, he's all on board with fucking Greater Israel Project. So is this just a kind of a, a hiatus? If it lasts 60 days, I doubt it lasts 60 days. Even still. Uh, so, but Hamas has been polite about this, and Hamas has said the right things. We are up for a serious negotiation in terms of a ceasefire, a permanent ceasefire, which would include getting the fuck out of Israel I and mean, getting the fuck out of Gaza and getting the fuck out of fucking the West Bank. By the way, they've been stepping up attacks in the West Bank and land grabs in the fucking West Bank. They are they already think they've 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 annexed the West Bank. They already think it's uh, Judea and Sumatra and it's it's no longer the West Bank. And if you look at Google Maps, West Bank is gone. Uh, they think it's it's theirs now. They've already stolen it. You know, while, while we're watching, while the whole world's watching, they just, you know. Um, <laughs> Hamas thinks this is still possible. Um, they're not going to concede. They're not going to give up. They're not going to quit and allow what happened to the West Bank start with happening in, in Gaza. 
is not going to happen. Um, and Hamas, I mean Hezbollah, uh, is of the same mindset. So by the way are a lot of fucking nations. But this is the fucking ceasefire deal we have. They signed it. They went on with it. Hezbollah did not. Lebanon did. Because of the terrorism and the brutality of the IDF in full support, by the way, uh, full support coming from the United States and the Biden administration and soon the Trump administration and U.S. media. Uh, regional resistance groups hail Hezbollah's steadfastness as ceasefire begins after Israel's failure. Ceasefire begins, but they, they, they just killed 17 more fucking people in Gaza. This is from Press TV. Iraq's anti-terror group, uh, Katalab Hezbollah, has hailed the ceasefire deal between Israel and Lebanon, saying the truth would have, truth would have been impossible without the steadfastness of the fighters of the Lebanese resistance movement, Hezbollah. Uh, Katab Hezbollah has made remarks in the past on, uh, on, on, in a statement on Wednesday, hours after a ceasefire began uh, between Israel and Lebanon officially became into, into effect, putting a temporary end to nearly 14 months of fighting between the two sides. It went on to say the decision was, without a doubt, a purely Lebanese one, stressing, however, uh, that a pause in action by any of the resistance groups across the region will not weaken uh, the unity of the resistance front. On the contrary, new parties will join, strengthen the resistance front to confront the enemies of Allah, his messenger, and his belief, and the believers. Uh, Kataib, uh, I think I'm saying that wrong, but okay. Kataib Hezbollah further held the United States, a partner of Zionist entity, and all its treacherous crimes of murder, destruction, and displacement, stressing that it must pay the price for these crimes sooner or later. End quote. Um... Not it, It's not for nothing that the people of Hamas uh, recognize the fact that this is a setback for Israel. Israel didn't get what they wanted. <coughs> they didn't get to leave their fucking troops in that fucking region. Um, there's one of them that has a map. I can show you. I think it's the first one. The deal itself. Here we go. This is a good one. This is from the BBC. This explains the whole thing from the BBC, so you can look at it and see. Um, but this is the area we're talking about. This is the river, uh, the Latani River, and of course this is the Blue Line. Uh, not for nothing, this is the chunk of Golan Heights, which Israel also is trying to steal. Um, so that's the map. Um, and this is a good article. If you, if you go to my... If you check out, I'll, I'll post links to these two articles right here uh, in the video. And if you go click on the deal itself, it'll give you more information on the actual deal. <coughs> so it's not for nothing that Israel was forced to basically take their fucking, uh, the same fucking deal they got in 2006, which was basically get the fuck out of Lebanon. You can't have this space. They wanted that space. They were bringing civilians up into that space, settlers, to illegally colonize it. Um, they, they were looking to take chunks out of Gaza, the West Bank, and of course, uh, Lebanon. This was, uh, these were acts of aggression, uh, military acts of aggression, in pursuit of expanding their fucking borders of Israel. And there's no other way of looking at it. This is what it is. It's not, oh, it's all about protection. Oh my God, it's all about protection. It's not about protection. It's about the greater Israel project. <laughs> Israel understands that when Hamas wins and they have to leave Gaza and they have to pull out of the West Bank and they have to recognize Palestine as a state and it will happen. When that happens, the Greater Israel Project is dead. Something like this that has had this much money and this much political influence poured into it does not die easily. Um, uh, so for Hamas and for Hezbollah and the people of Lebanon and the resistance fighters, uh, this is a victory 
for Hezbollah, who have promised they're not going to stop fighting until Israel leaves fucking Gaza and signs a deal with Gaza, recognizing Palestine? It is not. So when I say I have mixed feelings about it, I do still have mixed feelings about it. However, knowing Bibi Netanyahu and knowing what's awaiting him, not only now inside his country, but also outside his country, he can sign all the peace deals he wants. He can sign all the truces all he wants. He can sign whatever fucking deal it makes. He can even, you know, maybe even find a way to keep the prosecutors from prosecuting men inside of fucking Israel, which, but I doubt. Because, believe me when I tell you this, the real investigations into what happened on October 7th haven't started yet. They've partly begun. Herat's Times of Israel... Um, Jerusalem Post, they've all covered, these are all Israeli fucking institutions, along with Bet Salem and others, they've all done preliminary investigations into October 7th and found out that the IDF killed a lot of Jews. That's not hyperbole, that's not some kind of Hamas fucking deliberate misinformation, unless of course Hamas is writing for Jerusalem Post, Herats, and Times of Israel, and Bet Salem. All Israeli Jewish institutions. Okay? Uh, Herats is being fucking sanctioned now by the Israeli government, by the way. <laughs> once these things, once the real investigations into what happened, the leadership, the military leadership in that area, uh, who, who was in charge, he's already was ironed. So too has the head of uh, Shin Bet or Mossad, Shin Bet, who was in charge that day. He's also resigned. They know. So does Bibi Netanyahu. Once this thing is over and those investigations begin for real, the people of fucking Israel are going to demand answers. They're already demanding answers. They already know that this is political. This is being this is being continued politically. People are being held for now well over a year inside of fucking Gaza <laughs> when they could have reached a deal 11 months ago, 10 months ago, 9 months ago and put an end to the suffering of the people who are being held and the people's families. But Bibi doesn't care. Fuck those families. Fuck those people. Bibi will, be in prob will have problems. He will be out of power. So too will the Likud party. <laughs> so too will the rabid fucking... Jewish supremacist, Messianic Zionists. So, something like this that has really been in the process since 1917, um, something like this doesn't die easily. There's a reason Israel is a nation without borders. They don't recognize their own borders because they want more. They want to steal more land. And if they recognize their borders, that means that's Israel and you are illegally occupying another fucking nation. Or you are illegally attacking another nation. <laughs> I'll tell you something funny. This is just, I'll toss this out there for the fun of it and then I'm going to go on and I'll post these two videos. Um, <laughs> people like uh, Fakes like Bernie Sanders, who was supposedly opposed to a socialist, supposedly opposed to foreign intervention and aggression uh, when it was Barack Obama or when it was Bill Clinton. He always found a way to kind of backhandedly fucking support them. And of course, the big thing with Assad and the big thing with Gaddafi was that they were attacking their own people. Yeah, 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 we shouldn't be doing it. We shouldn't be regime change. He's, a, he's an evil dictator uh, attacking his own people. <laughs> You've heard me do that bad fucking impersonation of Bernie for many, many years now. Um, here's an interesting fun fact. Israel believes that Gaza and the West Bank are Israel. 
which means the people who were born there, the Palestinians who were born there, who were being bombed and killed and ethnically cleansed, are Israelis. If you take Bibi Netanyahu and the Israelis at their word, if you take people like Lindsey Graham and Marco Rubio at their word, if you take Donald Trump at his word, there's no such thing as Palestine. That's Israel. So anyone born there is Israeli. Ergo, Benjamin Netanyahu is an evil dictator who is killing his own people. And what do we do people like that? <laughs> well, if you ask Lindsey Graham, if it happens in Libya, then we have to regime change him and kill him. Lindsey Graham and Hillary Clinton. But when it comes to that happening in Israel, then what we have to do is threaten all the rest of the countries in the world to cripple their economies and send them into a Great Depression and kill people that way in order to defend Benjamin Netanyahu. It's the American way, boys. With a shining city on the hill, don't you know? <laughs>